How to buy 100 properties. Hi, I'm Ryan McLean and I'm from cashflowinvestor.com.au and today I want to talk about how to buy 100 properties. Obviously this is an amazing amount of properties and would make you significantly rich if you invest properly and so I wanted to cover how to get this many. Now this is going to be an overview, obviously I can't cover everything. Tip number one, start with just one property. Getting that first one under your belt is definitely the hardest one to do. So you need to save your deposit and you need to purchase your first property. Start small and learn from your experiences. Don't purchase a multi-million dollar property as your first property that if something goes wrong you're going to end up going bankrupt. Purchase something small that you can handle that if some minor thing goes wrong you're not going to go bankrupt and start small and then learn from your experiences and as you get more experience you can move up to more advanced deals. Have a strategy for success. You need to know what strategy you're going to use. In order to buy 100 properties you need to have a strategy where your portfolio is consistently increasing in value because once you get past just a few properties you're going to be leveraging those properties and the growth in them to buy more things like subdivision development renovation or investing in capital growth areas can all be investment strategies that have growth potential so choose your strategy wisely choose one that suits you well you can make money from all of them but you have to be smart about it, you have to be passionate, and you have to know what you're doing. So choose the right strategy for success, and choose the strategy that suits you well. Now, on to property two and three. Once you've purchased the first property, now it's time to purchase more. Around 90% of investors never buy more than one investment property. So they go out, they start, they buy an investment property, but then they never go further than that. And now I don't know about you, but one investment property might earn you a bit of extra money, but it's very unlikely to make you financially free. Save your deposit or leverage your equity to buy property number two and three. And there's a similar process to buying property number one. So stay small, um, keep learning, keep going, keep growing, and don't buy Try not to buy anything that is going to send you bankrupt if something small goes wrong with it. Growing from 3 to 100 properties requires something a little bit extra. Once you hit property number 3 or maybe property number 4 or 5 or 10, at some point you're going to hit a wall where you're going to be running out of serviceability. Now that's the ability to service a bank loan based on your income. Because you'll have so many bank loans with all of these properties you're buying, your income won't be big enough to support all of those loans. So when that happens, you'll need to start treating your portfolio like a business. Focus on cash flow and focus on growth and really maximize the return on your portfolio. You want the properties to continue to grow so you can leverage and buy more and you want to have a strong cash flow base that you can use so you can continue to service the loans. You can continue to buy more properties, you can continue to borrow more money because if you don't have that cash flow coming in and you're negatively geared, well how are you going to afford to be negatively geared on 100 properties? The more rental cash you have coming in, the more serviceability you will have. Building your team. If you want to go to 100 properties, then you're going to need a team of professionals around you, a team of trusted advisors that will help you build and manage your portfolio. Things like accountants, they can be really good doing your tax return. I don't know I wouldn't want to do a tax return on 100 properties. Legal advisors, if you ever need legal aid or as well in you know the solicitors and purchasing the property. Have a mentor, someone who's done it before, someone who is where you want to be in terms of investment. And real estate agents can be a great people to have in your team as well. They can let you know the good properties before they even come onto the market, which can be a really good resource to have if you want to buy multiple properties and you need ones where the person might need to sell quick and you want a discount. And then also look at mortgage brokers because you're going to need 
to get a lot of bank loans. So having that advice from a trusted mortgage broker can be very, very helpful. Don't rush. This is a very important tip. Obviously, we'd all love to have 100 properties overnight that were generating us millions of dollars. You can build a portfolio of 100 properties very quickly, but it's not without risk. You've got to think about things like what happens if interest rate go, goes up. How will that affect your cash flow when you're now paying 1% or 2% more on all of your mortgages? If you're highly leveraged, that can be risky. What happens if you have a couple of vacancies? If you have a couple of vacancies and no cash coming in, will that affect you? What happens if an area declines in value and the properties aren't going up in value or going backwards? How's that going to affect you? So when don't rush, think about these things and the risks. And then continue to build. Make sure you're constantly maximizing the return of your portfolio because if you're maximizing your return on all of your properties, then you're going to get ahead faster. So raise rents in line with the market. I know in the building my mum used to live in, there was a little old lady who was paying about $180 per week for a property that was worth about maybe $350 to $360 per week. She'd been there for 10 years or something like that, but if she was to move out, then she would have to pay those rents or higher elsewhere. So those people were missing out on a great deal of income coming in because they had chosen not to raise the rents in line with market. Get your property revalued on a regular basis if the area and the property has gone up in value. So if the property has gone up in value, get it revalued with the banks and you can then use that increased value and the equity that you have in that to purchase more. And structure your loans effectively if you want to continue to build. There are some loans that you may cross collateralize properties, but that may not be the most effective structure for you. Say one property goes up in value and one property goes down and they're together on a loan, well then you know your equity is still the same. But if you have two separate loans, then the one that goes down probably won't affect you and the one that goes up, you can draw on that equity. So talk to your mortgage broker or accountant or bank about that. So this has been how to buy 100 properties. I'm Ryan McLean from cashflowinvestor.com.au. To get more information, why don't you try our free crash course in investing in positive cash flow property. Just go to cashflowinvestor.com.au forward slash free.